Yeah, hello everybody. This is Dick Schmidt, Klima Process Control, and I welcome you to this paper on the this year's EnviroTech 2022. We all have a responsibility, and this responsibility is core point of this meeting today, EnviroTech. Reducing the carbon footprint with Cement 4.0 is the title of my paper, and I would like to introduce you in solutions and products we provide from Kima Process Control. You can find them, of course, on our webpage, but I will go stepwise through instrumentation and control from our product portfolio. A couple of people know, of course, that there is also another Kima company in Germany, which is called Kima Automation. This is our sister company, and they have a wide range of um, high voltage solutions, but also going down to uh, visualization process control systems and uh, visualizations. And you can find their product portfolio on www.kima.de. Now, the people of high level control systems, this is what we are. We from Kima Process Control designed a software called Smart Control introducing modules of artificial intelligence since more than 25 years. We were one of the first introducing artificial intelligence and also fuzzy logics. And we are a niche player, but however, we are one of the leadings in this field, uh, operating with high level control systems based on fuzzy logics, on nonlinear model predictive control and model predictive control. By the way, we are always selecting the best targets and opportunities of these technologies to decide what is the right module for which application. At the end, process optimization means always long-term analysis and short-term control. High-level control systems therefore need reliable and fast instrumentation. And here is our core competence. Kima Process Control designs not only this high-level control systems, also instrumentation and here specific instrumentations, which were the task of cement producers. We have very often the case that we are contacted by companies like Lafarge Holzim, by Heidelberg Cement and others, who say we need a certain solution for this measurement problem. Existing measurement solutions have their disadvantages and limitations and therefore we need certainly here a solution. This is what we do when we make instrumentation to at the end provide you that what you see in the screen a smooth operation for instance of your mill of your kiln or of your romix. The latest installations and the latest uh, developments what we have done is a system called gas temp flow. Digitalization is the key of success. We speak about cement 4.0 and gas temp is a consequent a new phenomenon which makes it possible to measure gas flow and temperature contactless. You know, of course, applications using temperature measurement by thermocouples. Thermocouples are mechanical. They are slowly, they are not very wear resistant uh, in high temperature and abrasive situations, they have a very limited lifetime. Gas flow measurement is done on Delta P or with pitot tube with a certain inaccuracy. Sometimes you reach not better performance than plus minus 10%. And this is of course a very big limitation in process optimization because you always have this gap of accuracy. Also other physical um, technical systems like uh, the introduced, uh, um, let me say, uh, 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 triboelectric uh, systems have also limitations. They are working with antennas. Antennas are again subject of where they are depending on particles in the gas stream. And if you don't have gas stream, you don't have a measurement signal. You could avoid that by introducing ionization and all that stuff, but it's quite complex and expensive.
Now gas temp flow introduce a precise and reliable acoustic measurement of flow and temperature and this new temperature principle offers the opportunity to measure gas stream and gas temperature in various applications. At the pyro line it is of course the downcomer flow plus temperature, the Kelsiner exit temperature, very important as the combustion must be completed there. Tertiary airflow plus temperature, flue gas stack flow plus temperature, bypass, waste heat recovery flow and temperature. I will show you later on a case study of the secondary air temperature as well as of course applications in vertical roller mills and mill outlet flows temperatures and uh, more on demand. The principle as an acoustic measurement provided by an acoustic ping which is sent through the gas duct and with two receivers we are able to measure the time this um, acoustic impulse needs from the transmitter to the receivers and from here it's possible easy and very correct to calculate the gas temperature and the gas flow. What is the advantage to measure temperature acoustically? Let me show this on an example here of the Kelsiner exit. You see green the acoustic measurement by gas temp and you see red and yellow the temperature measurement by a thermocouple. Now and here starts the big advantage. When you see that the thermocouples are uh, are increasing that the temperature is detected you see that we have seen it in the acoustic pyrometer 50 seconds earlier. When the thermocouples reach the peak temperature you see that the peak temperature in the acoustic measurement is almost gone. That means the peak temperature we measure 300 seconds faster. You can imagine that this is a huge time discrepancy and you can imagine that this is very useful of course for high level control systems to react faster. In this example when the thermocouples show the maximum temperature of course a controller has done something where it was not needed anymore. So you see here the gas temp 600 flow a uh, three days plot from a uh, cement plant downcomer in Enigalo this is in Germany, a plant operated by Heidelberg Cement and Heidelberg Cement ordered the first system in July 2021 and the second immediately then in October 2021 because they are very satisfied of the operation. Both systems are in two downcomer strings so that they can evaluate here also the balance between these two downcomer gas streams. Before I come to the um, economical benefit of the measurement, I would like to introduce also another measurement implement, uh, application which is installed in a Holzen plant in Germany in Dotternhausen. Here we have installed it at the Kilnhut and in the Kilnhut we measure the secondary air temperature. It is the temperature entering from the clinker cooler uh, below the main gas burner flame into the kiln. You will ask okay I have this temperature already because I measure the Kilnhut temperature. Correct. But you measure it with a thermocouple and this thermocouple is of course affected from the main burner flame infrared radiation and also from the clinker flow infrared radiation. While a gas temperature is of course related not to this infrared. So here we have more let me say the truth and as we measure extremely fast you see it here another advantage we can also see the influence of course from shock blowers you see here the shock blower effect um, and the rapid uh, reaction of the secondary uh, of the of the uh, temperature measurement yeah secondary air temperature measurement of the gas tank other applications are of course the tertial, tertiary air. Um, in this case it's a vertical pipe section of course it could be done also on the horizontal uh, section 
you see here a print of eight days in a plant of Vitersdorf in Austria, where we have implemented also our kiln master system. So here we installed also a down camera installation. We have also measured the bypass. So waste heat recovery station bypass gases. Of course, it is possible to measure the efficiency of these aggregates much better when you have a precise gas portion and gas temperature. But coming to a very important calculation, what is the benefit uh, when you change from a downcomer delta P instrument to the gas temp flow? I show this here now in the ID fan power consumption. Theoretically, the ID fan power is controlled by a cascade controller. This cascade controller considers both O2 plus the total flow. And the total flow is, of course, a design uh, amount from the manufacturer of the kiln so that he says the ID fan must have a certain consumption and certain volume. Now, if you measure this volume wrong with a mistake of 8%, and you change the instrument and you measure now with an accuracy of plus minus one percent, you can take this gap of air out. And this is what I considered here. We take out approximately eight percent of the fan produced power. So you see operational hours are same, 8000 hours. But at the end, you reduce the electric power consumption in a year by 1,280,000 kilowatt hours. Looking on the carbon footprint, which is of course our task, you find that these are 907 metric tons of CO2 each year. Considering, of course, now a return of invest, you can make the calculation using CO2 certificates. With 70 euros, you find here 63,000 euros and this can be also converted of course in greenhouse gas emissions um, in other examples you could say that 197 cars would produce this co2 per year or five coal wagons fired in a coal-fired power station now make us uh, easy the return of invest is easiest not to cal calculate by co2 we calculate it here simply by the power consumption. And if you see the save in electrical power energy multiplied with 0.1, so 10 euro cent per kilowatt hour, this is roughly 128,000 euros per year. I think a good investment, isn't it? Of course, you need a certain controller behind. And here in Vitersdorf and in another plant in the United States, we are already operating this with a kiln master. That means a high level control system using artificial intelligent modules. modules. More known are of course our mill filling solutions. And here we have Smart Fill, the 360 degrees impact sound analysis of ball mills. And you see also that this installation is um, on the mill body itself. This has various advantages. We send the raw signals from the mill shell to a receive unit, which you can see here mounted on the wall. In the globe, we have more than 850 installations worldwide now, and we have in 50 countries worldwide operating Smartville, and the success is very easy to explain. Microphones are using acoustic sound created by the balls, and if the walls are free from material, they are noisy, so the mill is relatively empty, and the mill is silent, recognized by this microphone from Hasler, Fowler phone, thank you, whatever you have there, and it is dull, so the mill is full. Now this is measured usually only on the first chamber of the mill, and it's installed on a static position. The problem is, you get first interference from other sounds of mills. That means a neighbor mill, uh, very nearby this one mill, has a big influence on the sound, of course, 
and you get so-called crosstalks. The other effect is that you're changing trajectories, so changing flight parables of the balls because they are part of wear, so become smaller, so they have another flying parable. So theoretically, you should move the microphone to the most actual um, main impact point. This is not possible. You would do it on a continuous way. So the result is an imprecise uh, measurement. Smartphone is different. It is installed on the mill body itself. You measure chamber one and chamber two very precisely. And the system is rotating with the mill so that the main impact point is in any case always seen. Here you see how easy then it is with this detailed information without any crosstalk option to find out what is a full, what is an empty mill. This is of course depending on the cement type because each cement type has a different sound. So this calibration can be done on individual cement types, but also you can store in our Millmaster specific sound, let me say characteristics, which I will introduce you later, for specific cement types. This calibration can be done fully automatically in the smart fill. And this is a big advantage from this long, long experience of operation, which we have. If you operate two or more cement mills in one building, simply you change the radio frequency of the transmitters from the mill to the receive units, which you can see here, and you don't have any crosstalk option at all. Smartfill offers another very reliable and important um, measurement output, and this is the temperature inside the ball mill. Temperature inside the ball mill means the temperature from the material leaving chamber one into chamber two. And here we have a hole drilled in one of the liner bolts inside the diaphragm. So inside this diaphragm, the temperature is measured, as you can see here, so that we can keep it in a certain window. And this window is very important. If you operate this temperature after chamber one over 120 degrees, you will create issues with your gypsum. If you go below 95 degrees, you will produce water and not in form of humidity, not in gas form. You will produce water in form of liquid into the second chamber. And this creates, of course, sticky material coating around the balls and less efficiency. Now, these signals, of course, all can be introduced in your DCS system and in your scatter system and can be shown, monitored. However, each signal and each um, let me say instrument is of course helpful for high level control systems. And this is where Smartfill was originally designed for. For our mill control, smart control, mill master. The integration in the scatter system is very simple and the operator can very simple switch between full automatic operation and manual operation. It is an autopilot. And the process engineers have the opportunity by their self to adjust and to adapt the actual Millmaster configuration at any time. Customers become, yeah, independent. Customers become the opportunity to work on their own on their optimization. So it's not the need always of uh, the software supplier yeah, to support them. That gives another opportunity also to bring back knowledge to the plant, of course, after a certain good training operated by our staff. The set points are very important now, smart fill fill levels. So the control of the ball mill will be based more or less uh, mainly on the fill level, but all other known Information are of course feeded in the system as, as well as limits, um, bucket elevator current, um, rejects amount, of course the classification of fineness, uh, blame and so on depending on the cement type. But for each cement type 
there is always a specific balance between chamber one and chamber two fill level. This is not a, not a surprise for us. It is a, of course, logic if you find a more fine material that chamber two is less filled than chamber one. You grind more out. When SmartFill is installed, you will first, first learn that your fill levels are very um, inhomogene, let me say. They are very rapidly changing if you have an issue with feed material or so. If you operate later <clears throat> instead of constant fresh material, controlled fresh material and constant fill level, you will see the big increase in performance. And this is what we have shown. The control with our system again is using various modules of AI and we can speak about a lot of case studies which I would like to do in individual presentations of course for use in case of interest just at the end of this presentation note my email address and contact me. These performance letters which we have show a huge and wide range of different type of ball mills. Over 200 of these are installed and here now also the efficiency and return of invest. Looking again first at the carbon footprint. If we can reduce the relative power consumption, and this is a standard that we reach here usually 5% production uh, 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 power consumption uh, reduction, then we easily speak in a 130 tons per hour uh, ball mill about an annual save of 3 million kilowatt hours. This are 2,156 metric tons of CO2. Again, using the certificates, this will give you a benefit of 150,000 euros per year. I calculate again how many cars must drive one year to reduce this greenhouse gases. This would be 470 cars. And if you look in coal, fired power plants, this would be a reduction of 12 coal wagons per year, less coal firing. The return of investment calculation again based on electricity savings and power costs. Here we create a benefit for our customers using Smartfill and Millmasters on one ball mill of 300,000 euros per year. Last but not least, I would like to take your attention on another big, big gap of energy source, of energy, hmm, let me say production, the kiln shell cooling. The kiln shell cooling needs a high power consumption, is very noisy and very limited in effect. You will know this fans also from your plant and you will have heard about our kiln cooler, a water spray system which is instead of the air fans cooling the kiln, but not only full, full, full and more efficient, it is more precise working. How can that be described better than in a thermo screen? You see here the uh, kiln cooler stationary screen at the control room and this black cubes show just where this system is actually spraying. And you see huge areas where no cooling is necessary and therefore the system is not spraying at all. On circumferences, you see also some ranges and areas where the system is not using cooling. It is just cooling on at the point where it is necessary. And this gives a huge advantage also when you fire alternative fuels. Alternative fuels bring always process disturbances inside the system. You will fight with coating drops. You will fight with ring formations. So whenever you change here something, you of course should change your combustion itself. That would be the optimum. But are you really so fast? If not, this system drives the kiln really on the acceptable temperature uh, wherever possible. You can individually each half meter adjust your target temperature, which you find here and adjust it. Yeah, 
and then the system operates nearly a controlled kiln shell temperature over the entire production period. Our customers report that they are able to prolong the kiln operation at least by four weeks, most of them say up to two months. The kiln cooler stationary installation is actually operating in Titan cement in Kamari in Greece, as well as in Kankhoi, Saraburi, Thailand. And let's also have here a look on the carbon footprint again. A 30 meters long kiln cooler stationary would have a huge power consumption. You would need usually 2.4 million kilowatt hours just electrical power for your air fans for this 30 meters of kiln section. We don't use this power. We need not even a tenth, we don't need even 1% of that, so that we range that we spare nearly completely this complete electrical power. This can be converted by 1700 CO2 metric tons. Calculating again with 70 euros CO2 certificates, this will finalize in nearly 120,000 euros or 370 cars driving one year. Again, this are 9.4 um, railway uh, wagons of coal. Again, also the return of invest calculation based on 10 euro cent per kilowatt hour. You could save here a huge amount of money just from this electricity consumption from cooling fans. Just last week, I get this fantastic result from Vasiliko Cement in Cyprus, which operate the kiln cooler and they say only with the kiln cooler technology it was possible to reach a substitution rate of 98%. Ladies and gentlemen, more information you can find, of course, on our webpage. You are most welcome to yeah, inform you here about all our productions, uh, products, process optimizations, and also this uh, shown calculations. However, you can drop me also an email. I would be pleased if you send me an email um, yeah, as reaction of this presentation. Thank you very much for your attention and bye-bye from Germany.